we know that the inverse operation of addition is subtraction similarly the inverse operation of multiplication is division and the inverse operation of a square is called the square root you know how to find out 3 square say 3 into 3 that gives me 9 so i can say that 3 square is 9 now how do i get 3 back from 9 well i will square root 9 to find out 3 now how to write the square root of 9 we use this symbol to denote square root so square root of 9 will give me 3 so this symbol is used to denote square root now we know that if we are having a square and it has the length as x and the area is given by a square units so how do we find the area we can say that length into length or that is side into side is equal to area of a square so what do we do x into x will give me the area so i can write this x into x as x square that gives me the area so what i have done i have squared this x to get the area now the inverse operation would be what square root so if i find out the square root of a that is the area of the square i will get x that is the length of each side of the square so i can say that here x which was the length of each side when squared gave us the area of this square and when we square rooted this area this gave me what this gave me the length of one side that is x so we can say that square root of a is equal to x and when we square x into x that is we find out x square we get a so root over a is the number which when squared gives us a that is the area of the square so this is the square root i am talking about and now we will study about it now let's say we have been given the area of the square as four square units now if i take one side as x so how will i find out the a side x into x is what we get four so x square is four but i don't know what is the value of x i need to take it out so to take out the value of x i have to do the inverse operation of square now we can say that four is equal to 2 into 2 right so here x can be written as 2 then we can get x square as 2 square which is 4 so we found out the value of x so we could say that x is equal to 2 because x square was 4 so x is equal to 2 So this square rooting sign here that is we found out what the square root of 4 just by knowing it mentally that 2 square is 4. So this sign is called the square root sign or the radical sign. Now here we were having the units say length and area in geometry. So we know that length cannot be negative. So 2 square gave us 4. But if we think outside this geometry we can also say that minus 2 square gives us 4 let's check 2 into 2 gives me what 4 and minus 2 square gives me minus 2 into minus 2 that is 2 into 2 4 and minus into minus plus or I can write this as 4 only so 2 square is 4 and minus 2 square is also 4 but this radical sign here this is called the principal square root which is used to denote positive square root now if you want to denote a negative square root what we'll do we'll put a minus sign before this radical sign to show that minus 2 is the square root of 4 now we found out that square root of 4 can be 2 or it can be minus 2 if we are putting a minus sign here 
But what about square rooting minus 4 itself? Can you find out the square root of minus 4? Well, we have studied that all square numbers are positive, whether they are square numbers of positive numbers or square numbers of negative numbers. But all square numbers are positive. So this cannot be a square number if this is negative. So we cannot find out the square root of minus 4. Let's see. We can see that 2 square is 4 and minus 2 square is also 4. So both these square roots belong to the square number 4. There is no square root for minus 4. So here also we can conclude that square numbers are always positive. Now, how do we find out square roots? Well, finding out the square root of 4 was very easy. We know that 2 square is 4. But if we have to find out the square root of a large number, say 256. So how will I find out? I do not remember the, squa the square roots of 256. Uh, there need to be a way to find out. Well, let's see how we can find out. We will study how to find out square root through prime factorization method. Now, what is this prime factorization method? Say we can find out the prime factors of the number 4. You can find out the prime factors of number 4. Let's see. 2, 1. So I can see that the prime factors of 4 are actually 2. So I can represent 4 as 2 into 2. Similarly, you can find out the prime factors of 8. Do that. See, what do I get? 8 can be written as 2 into 2 into 2. Similarly, if I give you any number with this prime factorization method, you can find out the prime factors of that number. See, 12. 12 can be represented by 2 into 2 into 3. Multiply and see. 2 into 2, 4. 4 into 3, 12. So this is the prime factorization of 12. Now, what if I find the prime factorization of the squares of these number. What will be the squares of these number? 4. 4 square is what? 4 into 4, 16. 8 square is 8 into 8, 64. And 12 square is 12 into 12, 144. Now, let us find out the prime factors of each of these three numbers. What do you get? Well, I found out that 16 is 2 into 2 into 2 into 2. Similarly, you can find out these factors for 64 and 144. So, this is what we get. 64 is 2 multiplied with itself 6 times. And 144 is 2 multiplied with itself 4 times into 3 multiplied with itself 2 times. So, what did we notice? You can see that when we found out the prime factors of 4, 8 and 12, let's take the example of 4 first. 4 is 2 into 2, whereas when we squared 4, we got 16, which is 2 into 2 into 2 into 2. So the number of factors doubled here. It was 2 into 2 here. It became 2 into 2 into 2 into 2. So if we look at this, you can see that this doubled here. Similarly, if you look at 8. Here 8 is 3 times 2. But when we found out the prime factorization of 8 squared, that is 64, we got, see, again, double the pairs that we got here. Even in 12 square, look at this. We got 2 into 2 here. And again, this is doubled. And 3 once here, and it is doubled here. So, what is actually happening? Actually, whenever we find out the square of a number, what happens? The prime factors of this number double itself in the prime factors of its square. Similarly, if we have to find out, again, the inverse operation of this square towards its square root, that is the number, what we have to do? We have to pair the 
prime factors so that we can get the prime factors of this number. You understood what I am saying? Repeating, whenever we square a number, the prime factors get doubled in the square. So if you have to do the inverse operation, we are having the prime factors of this square, we will pair them up and we can find out the prime factors of the number back. Well, let's find out the square root of 256. We could not find the square root verbally. So let's find out the prime factors of it. You can see that 256 is an even number, so it is divisible by 2. So I can see that 256 can be broken down into 2 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 into 2. So let me write this. 256 is equal to how many times 2? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we have successfully written down the prime factors of 256. Now what we have to do? We have to find out the square root of 256. What we have studied is whenever the number is squared, the prime factors are also uh, doubled. So whenever we have to find the square root, we have to pair the prime factors. That is pair them into groups of 2. So let us do the same here. So I can see that there are four pairs of two. That is when they are grouped into two, we can see four pairs of two here. Similarly, you could see that from here itself. So now let me write square root of 256. It is what? Now we, are, we have to write the numbers after grouping. So I can see four pairs. So I'll write two four times only. See what we have done? Instead of writing those eight twos again, we have just written four times. Why? Because we have grouped them into pairs, that is into two. So now what do we get? Two into two, four into two, eight into two, 16. So I can say that root over 256, that is square root of 256 is 16. So this is how we find out the square root of numbers where we group their prime factors into pairs of 2. Now, if I ask you, is 1200 a perfect square? Well, for that, you need to check out the list, whether it is there in that list or not. Well, that is not always possible. You cannot check out the list for any number. So what will you do? Well, the square rooting thing here will help us do that. Whenever you are asked whether a number is a perfect square or not, find out the square root and see. Well, let's try with this. Let us find out the square root of 1200. Just now, we have found out the square root of 256. So in the same way, find out the square root of 1200 yourself. Let's find out the prime factors of 1200. Well, it is an even number, so divisible by 2. Now it is not an even number anymore, so we have to divide it by 3. Now it won't go by 3, so next prime number is 5. So we can write this as 1200 is equal to 2 into 2, so 1, 2, 3, 4, so 4 times 2 into 3 into 5 into 5.
This is how we can represent 1200. Now we have to find out the square root of 1200. So in that case, we start pairing the numbers. So let us start pairing the numbers. Well, when I pair it here, I could see there is one pair of 2 again, again one pair of 2, a uh, one pair of 5, but then 3 does not have a pair for itself. Look at here. See, 3 is left alone. So all the, the numbers here have a pair for themselves, but 3 does not have a pair for itself. So whenever you find a number, when after prime factorizing uh, that number, you find that one of its prime factors do not have a pair for itself, you can say that this number is not a perfect square. So how do we write the square root of this number then? Well, for this pair, we can write 1, 2. For this pair, we can write 1, 2. And for this pair of 5, we can write 1, 5. But we could not find a pair for 3, so we will write this as root over 3. So this will give us what? 2 into 2, that is 4. 4 into 5, that is 20. Now, this root 3 can be written as 20 into root 3 or 20 root 3. So here you can see we are not getting a perfect natural number. So this 1200 is not a perfect square. So 1200 is not a perfect square. This is how we find out whether a number is a perfect square or not. Now there is a question. Can we make 1200 a perfect square by dividing it or multiplying it with any other number? Well, let's see how. Well, we had prime factorized this and we could see that 3 was the only number which did not have a pair for itself. Now, if I give it one pair, say I add one 3 here. So 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 5 into 5 into 3. So they had a pair for themselves, but 3 did not have a pair. So I add one 3 here. Then it will have a pair. So it will become what? A perfect square. We'll get 2 into 2 into 5 into 3. So you can see, they will have a perfect pair for themselves it, if I add one 3 here. So that means multiplying 1200 by 3 will give me a perfect square, that is 3600. Now there is one more method, I can make it a perfect square. Here we have added one 3. What if I remove this 3? What if I remove this 3? You can see, if I remove that extra 3, I'll still get pairs for themselves here, 2, 2 and 5. There is neither a number that is present without its pair. So that means dividing 1200 by 3 will also give me a perfect square. Now dividing this by 3, we get 400, which is a perfect square. So that means if a number is not a perfect square, you can divide it or multiply it with the number here, which is not having a pair for itself. In this case, 1200 into 3 gave us 3600, which is a perfect square, because it is a square of 60. And 1200 divided by 3 gave us 400, which was a perfect square of 20. So you can say that whenever we want to make a number a perfect square, prime factorize it, see which number is not having a pair for itself, and multiply or divide it by that number. So you'll get a perfect square.